Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Pepezani with your top stories this Friday. In Zimbabwe, a woman has been sentenced to 10 years in prison for taking advantage of her 19-year-old worker. The 54-year-old woman from Fort Rickson in Matebeleland, North Province, apparently forced herself on the boy and was intimate with him while her husband was away working. The accused pleaded not guilty to aggravated indecent assault, but was convicted by Senior Western Division Regional Magistrate Mr. Owen Tango. Mr. Goodluck Katenaire for the state said on the night of the 18th to the 19th of January this year, the accused went into the room where the boy was sleeping. The state proved that she lifted him up and took him to a bedroom where she proceeded to undress him and eventually became intimate with him. In passing sentence, Mr. Tango said, while it is the practice of the courts to keep first-time women offenders out of custody, the offense which she committed was a serious one. ATV has been following the story of the growing shortage of millimil in the Chingola district of the Copper Belt in Zambia. Unfortunately, the situation has worsened, prices having doubled in the last 48 hours. Buses packed with bags of millimil for commuters from the Copper Belt were seen at Lusaka's intercity bus terminals, and shop owners in the capital said that they quickly ran out of the commodity. The shortage situation looks like it's worsening as the Patriotic Front government has failed to pay farmers in almost all districts of the country, forcing some poorer farmers to stage protests at government offices. The government is blaming opposition and traders for the millimil supply problems and the escalating prices. We will update you with this story as it develops. Also in Zambia, there is a relief for a woman who, after a long wait, has undergone a successful operation on her exposed intestines. 23-year-old Ruth Mosonda was severely bitten by her husband, resulting in damage to her intestines. The attack left her needing to use a colostomy tube to, to dispose of the waste from her stomach. But now, as the following report from Movi TV explains, Ruth is on the road to recovery. After two months of anguish and little hope of healing, 23-year-old Ruth Msonda of Lusaka's Kanyama Township, whose intestine was cut after being severely beaten by her husband, has undergone a successful operation. Ruth looks strong and confident as she highly speaks of a quick recovery. <laughs> The fourth operation conducted on her at St. John's Hospital sealed off the cut intestine. Her stomach, which had been partly open for the past two months, has been mended. The only thing she's complaining about is that her right leg has remained numb after the operation. But this will not last long as she only needs to undergo physiotherapy for her to recover. <laughs> Her aunt Mary Maplanga hopes that Ruth finally recovers as soon as possible. The assault case against her husband largely depends on her quick recovery. Ruth is not only a complainant, but also a key witness. The Lusaka Magistrate Court has not commenced hearing of the case as state prosecutors look forward to her recovery. Prudence Mulenga, Movie TV News, Lusaka. Entertainment news now, and Uma Obama is the half-sister of the American President Barack Obama. 
She is in Zimbabwe for the International Image Film Festival for Women. Obama spoke at the Zimbabwean premiere of the film about her, directed by her old college friend, Nigerian-born Brywin Okupa. The documentary film is called The Education of Uma Obama and is receiving positive reviews. Online radio stations are on the increase, with many such stations aiming to serve up an array of African music to the wider world. One of these stations is Zimnet, a station that provides traditional African music, sangora and urban grooves, as well as chat shows and discussions. Well, yesterday, one of the DJs from Zimnet joined me in the studio, DJ Lady B, also known as Diva B or Belinda. So I firstly asked her where all these different names came from. Um, well, it's, it's quite interesting, really, because um, when I first started uh, uh, going into radio, I was uh, thinking, oh, what name should I use? And uh, one of my friends, uh, the guy who actually first introduced me to radio, said, oh, why don't you use Lady B? So I said, OK, that's fine. So I just took it. Um, and then uh, Diva B, I was thinking, oh, what name should I use? What name should I use? And then I thought, um, you know, you know the song, uh, Beyonce's song, uh, a diva is a, is a female vision, a version of the hustler. So I said, well, <laughs> I do what I do to survive. You know, I do quite a lot of things. I, I like to do quite a lot of things. So I am a female version of a, of a hustler. So I thought Diva B should be okay. So B is, uh, is short for my name, which is Belinda. So that's how the names came about. And how would you describe yourself? Um, well, uh, there are different sides of me, really. Uh, there's a quiet side of me that people actually don't believe I'm that quiet person. Uh, but I am a very quiet person, very shy, very reserved person. But I like to socialize. I like, to, I like going out, meeting people, learning uh, new things. And um, I would like to think that I'm a laid-back person, really. <laughs> but I don't know what people think about me. So Lady B, have you always loved music and did you know that you would work in radio? Uh, to be honest with you, uh, uh, because of my background, when I was growing up, I wasn't really much exposed into music when I was growing up. Uh, so when I came to England, uh, of course I listened to music when I was in Zimbabwe, but see, it wasn't as much as other uh, children my age were doing. So when I came to Zimbabwe, uh, sorry, when I came to the UK, um, I was missing Zimbabwe. I got disconnected from uh, this uh, music industry in Zimbabwe, and I didn't know what was happening music-wise. And then I came across an online radio station. So I started listening, and then I got, hmm, I, I, I'm liking this. So I started listening to Zim, uh, Zimbabwe music. So that's how I sort of like got back into the whole music scene. And ever since, I haven't looked back, and I really like Zimbabwe music, and I'm a big supporter of Zimbabwe music. So now you're a part of Zimnet. When and how did you get involved with them? Uh, what happened with Zimnet? I used to, uh, I, I had a friend who worked on Zimnet. He was a DJ on Zimnet. So he used to do uh, like a competition where he would get two people to come on his show and sort of do like a mini clash on, on the radio. And then uh, people would choose a winner. So I was clashing against uh, another girl. She lives in Luton. So uh, unfortunately, I lost to her. So after that, after we did that, so they just said to me, well, do you want to be part of Zimnet? I said, OK, I would love to, because uh, when I did that clash, I really enjoyed it. So I said, yeah, so um, I took the chance, so I joined Zimnet. So I've been with them for almost three years now. Does your Zimbabwean background play a great role in your presentation? Uh, it does, um, because uh, the shows that I do on Zimnet, on Zimnet um, uh, I'm, I'm most, mostly or mainly focused on upcoming musicians from Zimbabwe. And um, uh, what I do is, um, uh, what you are doing now, asking me questions, is what I normally do. <laughs> so I give them a platform to come on the radio to showcase their music, uh, especially if they're upcoming, because uh, it's very difficult for an upcoming musician to uh, to get a break into the music industry in Zimbabwe because uh, they all complain that they don't get enough airplay and. Uh, taking the advantage that there's a lot of Zimbabweans who are outside of Zimbabwe uh, who have access to the internet. Uh, it makes it easy for them to reach a wider a variety of audiences. So I give them that platform to come and talk to me. So yeah, uh, being Zimbabwean actually influences um, uh, what I do, uh, how I present um, 
uh, my shows and uh, obviously speaking in Shona is, all, is, a, is an added bonus. So apart from Radio Belinda, you're a board of trustee and a fundraiser coordinator for Help Us Help Ourselves. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, Help Us Help Ourselves is, is a charity organization that was started by Stephanie Chiangwa and um, uh, funny enough, people think I've known Stephanie for a long time, but uh, the first time I saw Stephanie was, I uh, uh, actually still remember the date, it was 14th of March uh, uh, this year. Uh, we went for a book launch, a uh, Betty McConnell's book launch in London, and that's when I met Stephanie. So uh, we were given a platform to speak by Betty. So uh, Stephanie uh, was talking about the vision that she has, that she wanted to start a charity organization. So I was like, oh this is something that I would really like to do, but because I haven't got the resources, I didn't have the resources to actually do it myself. So we started talking with Stephanie and then she asked me if I wanted to be part of the team. And because the, uh, the mission, the values, uh, about uh, the charity organization was something that, was, that I thought was, is really good and something that I'm passionate about. So I didn't even think twice uh, to say, yes, I'll join you. So I said, that's, that's okay, I would love to be part of the team. So that's how uh, we become a team. And um, it, it's not just me and Stephanie. Uh, we've got Beauty as well. Uh, she's based here in the UK. And uh, we have a director in Zimbabwe. Uh, his name is Mdiwa. So he's the man on the ground in Zimbabwe. So uh, basically what we do here is we try and do most of the fundraisings here. And uh, he identifies uh, what needs to be done in Zimbabwe. So he's the man on the ground. So he does most of the hard work in Zimbabwe. So, so that's, that's the team that we have. And finally, Belinda, what does 2013 hold for you? Uh, I hope it holds uh, a lot of things for me because uh, I like, um, uh, I'm also into, uh, I, I do some, some writing, I like writing, um, I, I also like movies, um, I've done one movie, it's not out yet, uh, I hope it's going to be out anytime soon, and uh, I've written my own script, I've written two scripts, so um, when we finish uh, launching our charity, because we're launching on the 1st of December, and uh, uh, we do have some concept that we are lined up for the charity, so I hope next year I'll I'll focus on my uh, on my film side of things. I hope uh, by the end of next year I would have produced my two films that I've written, and uh, hopefully the one that I've done will be out. So that's what I hope the future will hold for me, and uh, just to carry on doing the charity work that I've started doing, and uh, to grow myself as a personality, as a radio personality as well. That's what I hope I will do. Thank you very much for your time, Belinda. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> That was Lady B in the studio yesterday, but now we're crossing to Liam and Michael, who are outside Manchester United Stadium, Old Trafford, where a statue of manager Sir Alex Ferguson is being unveiled. Okay, thank you, Charity. Well, you joined myself and Michael Mambo at Old Trafford, the Theatre of Dreams, where we've just been to try and get a little sneak peek at some of the United legends who have been coming down to Old Trafford for a special unveiling of a Sir Alex Ferguson statue. Now the unveiling comes after 26 years of Sir Alex Ferguson being in charge at Manchester United. 26 years ago, his first game at Old Trafford was against Queen's Park Rangers. So it's almost fitting that tomorrow the Red Devils take on that QPR side at Old Trafford. Now it's good news for one manager today, Mike, but as we've just heard, QPR manager Mark Hughes has been sacked today. Your quick reaction to that, please. Well, it's, it's a tough time for managers. If you're not producing the results, you find your way out. What about Sir Alex Ferguson then? 26 years in the game. Is there a better manager ever? I don't think there is a better manager and there will ever be a better manager. For instance, everything's changed. It's now more of a results-based business and more people are pumping in money into the game the more the pressure is on managers. No person would want to go 26 years with that intense pressure on him. He is something of a one-off and he, he seems to be carrying on just as much as he was 26 years ago. His side are having to recover from a 1-0 loss at Norwich last week. Surely they're going to pump a few goals past QPR tomorrow. Definitely, with a managerless QPR and uh, everyone celebrating 26 years of Alex Ferguson, it's going to be a pretty interesting match tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to go for 4-0 on this one. I think the, uh, 
Red Devils team are going to really support their manager on his special day. What about you? I'm going to go for 3-0 on this one. OK, 3-0. Yeah. Right, well, we better talk about some other games. We are here at Old Trafford, but of course there are some other games going on in the Barclays Premier League. Michael, what about your side, Arsenal? They travel to Aston Villa. Uh, well, they, they follow a 5-2 thrashing of Spurs last week, and they won 2-0 in the Champions League. It's a good time for Arsenal. Do you expect them to carry on that form against Aston Villa? Well, they're not playing too well, but they are getting the results, and I expect them to win at least 2-0 against Aston Villa. Because Villa, of course, lost 5-0 last week, and they're now firmly in the relegation zone. Are they really likely to go down? Surely they're too big to go down. They're too big to go down, and they've been playing too well to go down. It's just they've had a bit of uh, uh, bad luck with the, with the run of games they've had, and hopefully after the Arsenal game they may pick up. OK, so it's a rare moment where me and Mambo actually agree on this one. We're both going for 2-0 for the Gunners. In other news, Swansea take on Liverpool in what is ex-Swansea boss Brendan Rodgers' first trip back to the Liberty Stadium. Is he going to get a good reception from his former crowd? He will get a good reception. He did pretty well for them, considering the resources at his disposal. And the fact that Swansea still play the Brendan Rodgers way is quite remarkable. He's tried to instill that in Liverpool, but it, it hasn't quite worked. And hopefully with a few more years, he will get it right. Well, it's, it's interesting that you say that because Swansea currently sit just one place above Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool shouldn't be down there in 11th place, should they? Is it a case of give him a bit of time and he will get them into a better position? Well, it's a case of if you look at uh, before the Premier League started, he didn't get much support from the board. He just inherited a team that basically wasn't playing well, a team that wasn't built to compete and he's just trying to re-educate them in his philosophy. So a bit more time and patience will work wonders for them. And a quick word about Luis Suarez. Of course, we mentioned him before on ATV. He seems to be the key. When he plays well, Liverpool play well. There was talk of Manchester City being interested, but Brendan Rodgers has quashed all those rumours. How important is it that they keep hold of their star player? It is very important for them to keep hold of Suarez because at the moment he's one of the top strikers in Europe. And with him in your team, you're guaranteed goals from any, any place. That, that's how ridiculously good he is. He can score from any place on the ground. Ridiculously good or not, I am myself going to have to go for a Swansea win on this one. I think at home they are fairly formidable and Liverpool aren't that good away from home. So I'm going for 2-1 to Swansea. What about you? Well, I'm going for a 3-2 win for Swansea. Oh, OK. That would be a, a high drama game. Two goals for Suarez. Two goals for Suarez. OK. <laughs> yeah. OK, well, we are at the Theatre of Dreams, Manchester United's home, so I better keep it quiet when I say we're going to talk about Manchester City next. But they are top of the league, and they travel to Chelsea. And obviously, we all know, Michael told us early in the week what's gone on at Chelsea, the sacking of Roberto Di Matteo following that 3-0 loss at Juventus, and almost bizarrely being replaced by former Liverpool boss Rafael Benitez. Now we talked about this, about the strangeness of that, of that person being put in. Basically, it's, it's a strange choice, isn't it? Well, it's a strange choice and at the same time, if, if you have billions at your disposal and you have a football club, you, you can do whatever you like with it. It's more of what he wants, unlike what the players want or what the supporters want. It's, it's his team, so he can basically do whatever he wants. But for me, it was a bad move because Di Matteo got them out of jail and won that one trophy that he wanted so much that even the great, the special one, Mourinho, could not get exactly. for him. Well, they go against Manchester City, who, yes, they are out of Europe, as we've discussed, but they're on prime form in the Premier League with that 5-0 thrashing, and they'll be looking to keep their place at the top of the Premier League against Chelsea, who will undoubtedly be a little bit unconfident after their manager was sacked. Can Chelsea stop City from winning this one? It's going to be tough for them to stop City from winning because it depends with the dressing room. Is there still that discontent in the dressing room? And at, at the moment, there ain't any big enough players to lift up uh, the games before they had Drogba, who could change it at any time. And they had Lampard in there, but Lampard is injured. They had Terry as well. Though those were their big players, the three key players. And Ashley Cole, who, who's got a never give up attitude. Interesting you mentioned Terry there because it was announced this morning by Benitez at his press conference that he is going to keep John Terry as captain of Chelsea. What do you make of that? 
Well, he, he basically had no choice. I don't see any manager being able to take Terry away from the captaincy. After all, Terry is, if I may say, Mr. Chelsea. Well, we know that everyone here who's been down to watch the famous Red Devils of the past, like Ruud van Nistelrooy has been here, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Eric Cantona, all these fans will be hoping that Chelsea can stop City. And if they do that, if they get anything like a draw, and then United do what is expected of them, and beat QPR tomorrow, then the Red Devils will go back to the top of the league and surely that will be fitting for the manager on his 26-year anniversary at the club. Just a quick one, I didn't get a result from you on Chelsea City. Are you, is it too close to call? Uh, it, it will be 2-1 to City. 2-1 to City. Now, I think ATV, view fan, ATV viewers know I'm a Man United fan, so I might be a little bit biased when I say I think it might be a one-all draw. Either way, it should be a close encounter. Well, that's just about it from us here at Old Trafford. We've been down to celebrate Sir Alex Ferguson and his 26 years at the club. Hopefully, for me anyway, the team will do the honour on the pitch and win tomorrow. We'll be back from our normal position in the ATV studio on Monday. Join us then. And finally, we have some reports of flooding in Zimbabwe on our ATV Facebook page. This picture was sent in by Lunda Mungu in Chintengu and Trust Badgiwa said this floods blocked people's way to work in Zivishavane. We send our thoughts to anyone affected by the flooding. Please do take care. Our final photo of the day for this week has been sent in by Nelson um, Tambuka. Keep your photos coming to us if you want to win photo of the day for next week. Thanks for joining us on ATV. Have a pleasant weekend and we will see you on Monday.